Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Thank you for watching this clip on inverse function theorem. It's a pretty nifty little tool that you got to get used to seeing it. It's kind of like uh, writing a mirror image, which I can't do, but if you can, it's kind of nifty thing of uh, equivalent to this inverse function theorem. Let's talk about the theorem and let's see how we're going to use it. The theorem says, look, if you have a function that's inverse of each other, okay, let's call it f and g, like this one. So f of inverse is equal to g, then the inverse derivative, so this is the inverse, is equal to 1 over the function prime evaluated at a different point. Okay, I'm going to put this one A and this one evaluated B, where A and F of A is the original function. It looks kind of like pretty complicated until you use it, and then you, I don't know about you, but I, the first time I used it, I was very grateful to see, wow, this thing actually works out. Okay, so let's take a look at our clues over here. We're given that f inverse is equal to g, and now this is a backward clue. g of minus 1 is equal to 5. you got to read this clue clearly in that since the inverse, that's saying f of 5 is equal to minus 1. That makes sense, right? Because this g is the inverse function. The inverse take the value, give it back to the x. So f of our original function at 5 is equal to minus 1. Okay, and then from here, then f inverse evaluated at minus 1 got equal to 1 over f prime evaluated at 5. So this is the inverse value. Inverse value. Okay, this one is the variable. So in our case, now on the test, if you get to this step and you realize that they're giving you f prime of 5, then 99% of the chance you are on the right track. Okay, so this is minus half over here. Flipped over, and we have minus 2 for g prime of minus 1. Okay, now don't let this verbiage scare you. Always saying that if you want to find the inverse, derivative of the inverse, you got to grab the value that's in the y domain. Okay, so th think of this one as the inverse. And then it's equal to 1 over the original function evaluated at a. I think on a lot of textbooks they use x and y. I found it really confusing. So see if this one helps you. Writing it as a and b. B is the y value, the variable, okay? All right, I hope this one is clear. Like I said, uh, it's not hard, but if you can sit down and spend a little time, get clear which one is A, which one is B, which one belongs to the inverse, and which one, maybe this would help. If this is the function, A is here, okay, function takes it A to B. The inverse function takes B back to A. All right, I hope this diagram helps you. Please leave a comment on YouTube for this video and let me know how you liked this video and if it helped you at all. Until next time, have a confident day.